Tonight, Placebo Glamopus, Brian Molko, fun-loving criminal Huey, and the man behind the loaded generation, GQ editor James Brown. Hiya, I'm Joe Wiley and welcome to the final show in the present series. It's been another tripped out seven days in the muddy fields of popular music and here ready to pitch their tents and roll into the VIP area are James right. and Brian Hi. and Huey. Yeah, Huey, you've sold over half a million albums throughout Europe. Do you uh, have some kind of casino-style penthouse that you go to, you retreat no, I, to? No, I got a little chill pad. Uh, actually, I didn't really know I had it until I got off tour. I was living with a girl and she found this really nice apartment. And then I got home and she left, so I have this like really nice apartment. Very big, very spacious. You guys got to come visit, you know. Crime, does, does crime pay? Because that was kind of your route into the Marines, wasn't it? Yeah, that's, that's how I got into the Marines. I was a little troublemaking kid and uh, it didn't pay. Uh, when you're 17 years old and you find yourself in a lockdown, you kind of figure out that uh, it's not the best way to go. Yeah. And what about um, if you weren't a rock star, what would you be doing? Uh, running numbers, shy locking, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, but maybe it just gets diluted now. There are so many bands out there and everyone's making kind of mediocre music. There well, so there should only be a few people. Well, no, no, I mean, no, it's, but it's, I... it's about the money though, isn't it? A lot of yeah. bands do it for the money. Mm. Uh, back in the day, let's take the Rolling Stones for example, they did it for the chicks. The chicks? You know, no, the chicks. It's different now. You got guys uh, sampling old music and, and not really expressing themselves, but expressing stuff that they know will sell. So if you're doing something like that, you're not really in it for the peeps. Like if the Beatles were around now, they'd probably get dropped. Because they're playing all this weird shit with trombones and stuff. You yeah. know, no one wants to hear that now. They want to hear the old jam from 1988 that made them, you know, shake their ass and do their thing when they were young. It's all about cultural touchdowns now. It's uh, if something worked then, it'll work now if you throw a hip hop beat on it or something like that. And it's all about making the money. You see these guys, they all want to make the money. Do you think they always wanted to make money now? Well, uh, you know, not That's really. They, they wanted to get out of they wanted to get out of the hole they were in. You know, when I got out of the Marines, I was a bum at. You know, God bless. I was a bus boy at the limelight. I didn't want money. I just wanted to get out of being a bus boy. And that's what I'm in it for. I mean, I'm, God knows I'm not making money. My man is over there clocking. How was Hawaii? <laughs> is Hawaii Hawaii nice? was good. I'm, very, I'm chopping onions. But it's, it's true. I mean, some people are in it for one thing. Mm. Some people are in it for the other. Mm. You know, I'm in it so I don't have to carry beer around the club. Mm. So you can chop you know, onions. So I can chop onions. I'd mm. agree with Huey. You know, sort of getting into a band has got a lot to do about running away. You know, sometimes mm. running away from yourself. Uh, now, last week saw the release of this, the arch goth compilation Nocturnal. It plums the darkest recesses of 80s gloom rock. You can take that home with you Thank and try you and plug it on the streets of New York. Uh, was goth all crimped hair and mock cod posturing, or does its pallid spectre still have a right to haunt the 90s? We'll take a tremulous look back and catch some of the horror as it unfolded over a decade. Huey, in the UK we had Sisters of Mercy, in America you've got Marilyn Manson, do you mm -hmm. like him? You, you meet him and you're expecting yeah. like, you know, a couple, you know, straight raises to come at you and he's, he's yeah. very mellow and very cool and he knows exactly what he's doing, God bless Very him. eloquent, yeah. you know, he's in control. What are, what are the fans like when you go to a Marilyn Manson gig or if you're supporting them? Well, I, well I, we, we haven't played with him but I saw him in Detroit but I think it's, it's a sense of people actually belonging to something that's not uh, MTV or Foo Fighters or Puff Daddy, you yeah. know, something that's a little more... Uh, unique and, and something there where there's a shared emotion. It's aside. all very, like we said about being miserable, if, I mean, have you had your bleak moments when you felt like painting well, I'm it Puerto Rican. black? I'm Puerto Rican, so my bleak moments I, I put on the Tito Puente, you know, <laughs> the, the slow Tito Puente. And <laughs> Can you see a link, a parallel between them and the bands like Radiohead that are around at the moment? Radiohead, I mean, I, I know this one guy in the band, this guy Ed, the rhythm guitar player. Yeah, he's so, cheerful. Yeah, he's cool. The rest of the dudes are all like, but, you know, I, I kind of get this impression from a lot of musicians that they're really upset at the fact that they're doing what they really always wanted to do. You know, I don't get that from you, though, but I mean, we're having fun. Mm. This is like, you know, ever since we were little kids smoking cigarettes out our window, listening to the radio, this is what we wanted to do. Mm. So, you know, have well, a good time. Maybe they're just feeling the pressure of being in a band and having uh, to do lots of interviews. And hey, I can tell the record company to fuck off. They can, too, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's one of those things, you know. Uh, what do you think about, like, complete contrast, bands like Hanson? Have you had I have beef with, with the little Hanson. I know you've you got beef with You heard about that, I right? I know you've got beef with the little Hanson. Can anybody yeah. have anything Look, I'm against cool. that? Look, you know, I'm cool. No, little Zach, 11. the kid's got a mouth on him, though, like a sailor. I was, you know, we're in Holland, we're doing the little MTV thing, yeah. and it's Holland, so people are smoking, you know? So I'm smoking in the hallway. Not fast jazz as... cigarettes you're talking about. Yeah, not these. 
and I'm outside, I'm smoking my little thing, and I hear, hey, you can't smoke out here. I turn around, and there's this little Hanson kid. You know, I, I kind of lean down a little bit, and I say, you know, uh, take it easy, you know, why don't you go back in your little room? You can't smoke out here. So I'm being mean, you know, I, I break balls a lot, so I say, you know, I'll hit a kid, and he runs. <laughs> His dad comes out. So you, so you were threatening him, right? Well, okay. I didn't threaten him. I was breaking his little onions, you know. But his dad comes out. Hey, who's talking bad to my son? I was like, that was me. I'm, you know, uh, your kid's got a big mouth on him. I was just kind of, you know, letting him know that, you know, this ain't the family kind of vibe. It's Holland and so forth. And uh, he understood. The father is a grown man. He understands. Stuff. But yeah, I got beef with the little guy. I'm okay. waiting until he gets about 16 and I'm, a, you know. Huey. I, I think Sonic Youth are great. I, I like uh, Harmony, buddy of mine, good filmmaker. And the whole uh, Macaulay Culkin licking his lips thing, it's bringing him a new generation. He could be Harrison Ford in about 22 years. Sonic Youth have been talking about growing old and still trying to maintain that rebelliousness. Um, do you think they're past it? No. 40 plus? No. They're, they're one of the people that can do it still. I was talking to him about they live in, in this weird part of New York City that kind of you have to keep it real you know i hate using that word keeping it real but they do they keep it real right traditionally hip-hop's ladies have either been dungaree clad tomboys nubian queens or mac divas last year missy elliott changed all that with her sci-fi debut album super duper fly sit down now <laughs> she writes she produces she raps and she blasts off into hyperspace in her videos here's the original hee haw girl with like hit him with the hee haw excellent <laughs> Does Missy appeal to you in that same respect? Totally, totally. She's, she seems like a woman who takes no shit, you know? <laughs> I mean, there's music um, for different parts of your life. I mean, if you want to be really introspective, you can listen to a little Pink Floyd. If you want to get down, you can listen to Missy Elliott. The thing that's important about her is that she's not, she's not exploiting herself. I mean, she's an artist, actually. And, and I think nowadays, if you have, like, you know, the size four body and you show it, it helps your record sales, especially in the United States, you know. She doesn't, you know, portray herself in that way, and I think that's what's good about her. And from what I've read about her, she has a lot of control over everything that goes well, she's down. She's very cool. She, know, she did so. it the right way, yeah. But you know, I met her at, at the MTV Music Awards, and she was fantastic. The MTV Music Awards? Yeah, the, after I beefed with that little punk. <laughs> I, I, was, I was freaked, so I walked and I saw her, and she was, she was exemplary. She was wonderful. And, uh, and you, you want to do things like, you want to meet people that you admire, and they are as they seem. Like, I don't mean to be dissing David Bowie because he's your boy and all. He's but I met him. Boy. I was in the Marine, so I called him Sir. He got all mad. You know, took the sunglasses. I was like, my name's Dave. Uh. But a lot of people take themselves too seriously. Why yeah. did you call him Sir? Did you mistake him for your commanding officer? <laughs> no, I didn't. Did, was there somebody in the Marines <laughs> like David Bowie? No, no, just, no, like, no, like, yeah. no, I'll tell you this, man. Uh, I have respect for David Bowie. Grew up listening to his music. And if my conditioning in the Marine Corps had me call him Sir, it did. And I didn't mean anything bad by it. I... I just think people take themselves a little too seriously. We're, we're just musicians, you know? And, and all we do is make music, and that's all we do well. And Huey, what song sets the ambience around it? Uh, I like, uh, Lee Scratch Perry came out with a compilation called Archaeology. Amazing box yeah. set. I love Lee Perry. You know, I like reggae music, you know, Trojan Records, anything from them is cool. A little bit of Frank, Never Hurt Nobody. Okay, but we'll stick with Lee Scratch Perry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, time is up, not just for my three Malcolm Tents here, James Brown, <laughs> Thank Brian you. Malko, Thank you. and Huey. But also for me and this first series, someone once said that pop's an argument where anyone can join in. I hope you felt part of it. I'll see you again.